Hello, everyone, and welcome to Toronto Apologetics. I am your host, Tony Costa, and we are happy to have you along uh, for this uh, important session that we are going to be discussing on the subject uh, related to Islam. And so this video and this channel is committed to the defense of the Christian faith, and we are uh, invested in giving uh, answers to questions about the Christian faith and equipping Christians on how to defend their faith. In this channel, we will address various subjects. As you can see from the content of this channel, we deal with different topics and issues that are challenging in our day and that are also uh, rivaling the Christian worldview. And our, uh, our theme scripture is 1 Peter 3.15, that we ought to set apart Christ as Lord in our hearts and always be ready to give an answer to those who ask of us about the hope that we have and to do this with reverence and humility. And so uh, tonight, or today rather, we are going to be dealing uh, with the subject of the slaying of the prophets and the escape of Jesus. The slaying of the prophets and the escape of Jesus. Do Muslims make distinctions among the prophets? In Islam, of course, the idea uh, in Islam is that Jesus never died. That is the view that Muslims hold to. This is the classical view uh, held in Islam that Jesus of Nazareth did not die on the cross, nor was he crucified. One of the standard uh, responses that uh, Muslims usually give to this uh, is that God would not allow a prophet, a faithful prophet like Jesus, to be handed over to his enemies to suffer an insulting death like crucifixion. And so the argument goes that Jesus was rescued from this uh, event of the crucifixion by God or Allah, and that Allah simply whisked Jesus up to himself, that is to say he uh, delivered him from his enemies so that he would not die. And so uh, when it comes to this peculiar uh, teaching in Islam about Jesus, uh, Christians, of course, naturally find this very bizarre that Muslims don't believe, at least classical Islam doesn't believe in the death of Jesus by crucifixion. But this has been the majority view, and it is based on primarily the Islamic text, uh, in particular the Quran, as we shall see. So I entitled this, The Slaying of the Prophets and the Escape of Jesus. Do Muslims make distinctions among the prophets? So let's begin by first looking at uh, Surah 3, uh, or chapter 3. It's called, uh, the word chapter is Surah uh, in, in the Quran, Surah 3, verse 84. Say, O Muhammad, we believe in Allah and that which is revealed unto us and that which was revealed unto Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes, that's the tribes of Israel, and that which was vouchsafed unto Moses and Jesus and the prophets from the Lord. We make no distinctions between any of them and unto him, that's a lot we have surrendered. So in this passage here in Surah 3, known as Surah Al-Imran in Arabic, uh, Muhammad is commanded to say, and incidentally, the, the, the word uh, Muhammad is, sometime, is, is usually sometimes supplied by the translator. Uh, in this case, uh, Pikthal, this is Marbaduk Pikthal's uh, English translation of the Quran. Uh, but in the Quran, it simply says, say, uh, we believe in Allah and that which is revealed unto us. And so this is some of the words that Muslims are told to respond to the uh, people of the book, like the Jews and the Christians. And they're to say that we, we believe in the revelation that was given to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 tribes. In other words, these are all regarded as prophets in Islam. And also, um, Moses and Jesus are also included in this number of the prophets. And notice it goes on to say, we make no distinction between any of them. In other words, Muslims are not allowed to make distinctions between the prophets. Now, of course, in, in practicality, uh, this simply is not true in, in terms of practicality. What do I mean by this? Well, what I mean is that Muslims clearly treat Muhammad uh, 
in distinction, in higher distinction towards the other prophets. Uh, the, when someone produces a, a, a cartoon satire or a picture of Muhammad, there are a lot of uh, protests and, and there's a lot of demonstrations by Muslims around the world. But when the same thing is done to biblical characters like Jesus or Noah or Moses or Abraham, uh, that does not elicit the same response that Muslims usually give to uh, pictures or caricatures of Muhammad. The other thing that this verse is saying is that Muslims are not supposed to make any distinctions between the prophets in terms of one being better than the other. And so many Muslims will say that we honor Jesus as a prophet, we honor Moses as a prophet, we honor Abraham as a prophet, uh, and we don't make distinctions among them. We, we treat them uh, as, as equals. Prophets are equals to each other. Now remember that because we're going to make reference to this again. So the whole idea is that they believe revelation was given to these prophets who are mentioned here in this verse, and that they are not to make any distinctions between any of them. They're to treat them as equals. Now, what we find then as we move on in uh, the Quran is that the Quran has some very interesting things to say about how some of these prophets were treated. So in Surah 2, verse 91, it says, and when it is said unto them, the Jews, believe in that which Allah hath revealed, they say, we believe in that which was revealed unto us, that is the Torah, the Hebrew scriptures, and they disbelieve in that which cometh after it, the Quran, though it is the truth confirming that which they possess. In other words, the Quran is supposed to be the confirmation of the previous scriptures. Say unto them, again, referring to the recipient of these words, uh, Muhammad, when then, why then slew ye the prophets of Allah of our time, if you are indeed believers? And so the question is, look, if you did receive revelation from Allah, just like I'm receiving it in the Quran, then why then did you slay the prophets of Allah of our time? So the charge that is being leveled here against the Jews is that they slew the prophets. They were slayers of the prophets. And you will notice here that usually the target audience, the accusation here of the slaying of the prophets is leveled against the Jews. But I want you to notice that prophets were slain. They were put to death, um, according to this passage, by the Jews in the past. Now remember, according again to uh, Surah 3 that we just read, there are to be no distinctions made between the prophets. So these prophets here mentioned in this verse were slain. Now, when we move forward in the Quran in Surah 3, verse 181, it says, Verily Allah heard the saying of those who said, when asked for contributions to the war, Allah forsooth is poor and we are rich. We shall record their saying with their slaying of the prophets wrongfully, and we shall say, taste ye the punishment of burning. So you need to also understand that when Allah speaks in the Quran, he speaks in the plural, the first person plural, we. Now, I don't have time to go into details as to why that is. That, that could be a, su a subject for another day. But uh, suffice it to say, in the Quran, Allah speaks in the plural. So Allah says, we shall record their saying with their slaying, of the prophets. In other words, they will face judgment uh, and, and, and hellfire. That's why it says, taste the punishment of burning. So once again here, the, the idea here is that the prophets were slain wrongfully. So prophets of Allah were killed by their enemies. They died. So let's just keep that in mind. Remember, we make no distinction among the prophets, Muslims say according to uh, the Quran. But prophets, one thing we do know from the Quran is that there are a number of passages saying that prophets were slain. And then when we move along to uh, Surah 3, verse 183, it says, the same are those who say, lo, Allah hath charged us that we believe not in any messenger until he bring us an offering which fire from heaven shall devour. This is again, a reference to the Jews. Say unto them, O Muhammad, messengers came unto you before me with miracles, and with that very miracle which you describe. 
Why then did you slay them? Answer that if you are truthful. And so here you have this, this, goal, this, this back and forth between the Jews and Muhammad. And so when, when the Jews are saying here that Allah uh, charged them, the Jews, not to believe in any messenger, that is another prophet, until he brings an offering which fire from heaven shall devour. So this is probably an echo of the story in 1 Kings uh, 18 and 19 of Mount Carmel with, with the prophet Elijah. And um, the response that Muhammad is to give to them is to say, messengers came unto you before with miracles. In other words, prophets who are also called messengers in the Quran, uh, these messengers, these prophets came to you with miracles and with that very miracle which you described, that is the, the, the fire uh, devouring an offering, which would refer to the story of Elijah in 1 Kings 18 and 19, which is, which is quite interesting, of course, because uh, the Quran only speaks about the Torah and the, the Zabur, which are the Psalms, but it doesn't seem to have any knowledge of the historical books of the Old Testament, although it does contain characters from those books, like David and Solomon, and so forth. But notice that the question that is asked is, look, these prophets, these messengers, they came uh, before me with miracles. Now, Muhammad, remember, according to the Quran, Muhammad did not perform any miracles. He, he could not. In fact, he said, I am only a warner. And that's one of the reasons why the people questioned him was because if you're a prophet, well, then where are your signs of prophethood? Just like the other prophets in the past performed signs and wonders and miracles. Where are your miracles? Muhammad turns that around, turns the table, so to speak, and says to them, well, prophets came to you with miracles and you didn't even believe them. And why did you slay them? So remember, these are prophets who came and they were slain. Prophets were killed. Remember, once again, Muslims are not to make any distinction among the prophets. Now, when we move forward and we come to Surah 4, a very significant uh, surah, sometimes this surah is called the Surah of the Women, Surah Ar Nasi or Nasa, the women. Uh, in this uh, surah, in Surah 4, verse uh, 155, what we read here, again, if you notice, is this is being addressed against the Jews. And um, you will notice here that the same language is being used as in the passages that we saw before. Then because of there, that is the Jews breaking of their covenant and their disbelieving in the revelations of Allah and their slaying of the prophets wrongfully. So notice once again, the Jews are being accused here uh, consistently as the slayers of the prophets. So they're accused of breaking their covenant, disbelieving in the revelations of Allah, and slaying the prophets wrongfully. And they're saying, our hearts are hardened, nay, but Allah set a seal upon them for their disbelief so that they believe not, save a few. So only a few of these Jews are going to believe, namely become Muslims. But notice once again, that they're also accused of slaying the prophets. Now, why is this significant? This is significant because in this section of the Quran, it will go on to talk about the alleged, according to the Quran, alleged death and crucifixion of Jesus. Now, what is interesting about this passage is that in the following verse, in Surah 4, 156, it, it mentions, it says there, because of the calumny that they, that is the Jews, raised against Mary, the mother of Jesus, probably referring to the disparaging remarks about Mary in, in the Jewish Talmud. Uh, it goes on then to talk about Jesus. Now, this is very important because here in Surah 4, verse 155, it once again accuses the Jews of slaying the prophets. So prophets were killed. And then it goes and turns attention to the fact that not only in Surah 4, 156, they disparage the mother of Jesus. But then we come to the famous passage in the Quran that denies that Jesus died and was uh, crucified and died by crucifixion. So here in Surah 4, 157 to 158 of the Quran, it says, and because of their saying, we slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger, they slew him not, nor crucified him, but it appeared so unto them. And lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof. They have no knowledge thereof, save pursuit of a conjecture. They slew him not for certain, 
but Allah took him up unto himself. Allah was ever mighty and wise. Now, the context bears out, as I pointed out in verse 156, that this is a reference, this is referring to the Jews. Because of their saying, we slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Now, at face value, that looks very strange. Uh, why would any Jew slay the Messiah, one who they believe to be the Messiah? That would make no sense. Uh, if, they, if they slew someone who they saw to be a false prophet or false teacher by stoning, for example, that's, that's one thing. But no Jew would rightfully say, we slew the Messiah. Now, some Muslim commentators will say, well, this is just being said in, in mockery, or it's being said in jest by the Jews. But the context is not overly clear on this. But it goes on to say that they make the claim they slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger. But notice the Quran responds by saying they slew him not, nor crucify him. So they slew him not, wama katalahu, and they did, and they crucified him not, wama salabahu. And so the Quran makes it very clear that he was not crucified and he was not slain. Now remember, all the other passages we've been looking at were saying over and over again, they slew the prophets. They slew the prophets. Why did you slay the prophets? And now here you have the prophet Jesus who is to be taken to be crucified, but then the Quran says they slew him not nor crucified him. It only appeared so unto them. In other words, it wasn't really Jesus that ended up on the cross. And so many Muslims have come and said, well, it was probably Judas Iscariot, and, and uh, the, he took the appearance of Jesus. They thought he was Jesus, and so they took him. And, and others have different uh, views on this. It was Simon of Cyrene that carried the cross, and so forth and so on. So the Quran says they think they killed him. They think they crucified him, but it, they didn't. It appeared so unto them, which is a language that you find in the Gnostic texts that also uh, a number of them deny that Jesus actually died, but it only appeared so unto them. And that's because the Gnostics denied that Jesus was a real human being. But then it goes on to say that those who disagree concerning it, that is the death and crucifixion of Jesus, they're in doubt thereof. They have no knowledge of it, but pursuit of a conjecture. Notice the Quran goes once again to say they slew him not for certain. He was not slain. But Allah took him up unto himself. Allah was ever mighty wise. So Allah took Jesus up to himself alive in his body. And so he is the only Muslim prophet who is in the presence of Allah in heaven, alive with his body. Uh, and they believe he will come one day to destroy Christianity, uh, spread Islam, and die uh, in, in the cause of Allah and be buried next to Muhammad in Medina. And so here's the problem. Up until now, we've been reading consistently, consistently that prophets were slain. Prophets, messengers of Allah was sent to the Jews, and many of them were slain. But we also read that Muslims are not to make distinctions among the prophets. Well, if they're not supposed to make distinctions among the prophets, why is the distinction being made with Jesus? Why does Jesus get a free pass? Why does Jesus get away with it? With, without being killed here. Why is Jesus saved from this humiliating death and other prophets were not? Is that not making distinctions among the prophets? Is it not saying that Jesus was somehow special, whereas these other prophets who died were not? Remember, you're not supposed to make distinctions among the prophets. And so in this case, Jesus is saved from this humiliating death, but yet other prophets died. And even Muhammad, when you look at the death of Muhammad, even though he wasn't uh, killed in battle, which was one of his desires to die in, in, in battle in jihad, if he could come back, he said he'd love to be martyred in the cause of Allah. But Muhammad, Muhammad ended up dying from, from food poisoning that, that he was inflicted with when a Jewess that had her family destroyed by Muhammad by warfare and he killed her family and then took her as one of his sex slaves, according to the Quran for verse three, that men can take um, up to four wives and they can take women whom the right hand possesses in warfare and jihad, sex slaves. And yet he ended up dying a horrible death by poisoning, a humiliating death 
by a Jewish woman. But yet, for some strange reason, the Quran exempts Jesus from any of these shameful deaths. But in so doing, what the Quran effectively does is the Quran does make distinctions among the prophets by claiming that Jesus, unlike other prophets, escaped death. And so here we have a serious problem. If all the prophets are equals, and Muhammad said that all the prophets have a common father, they have the same father. If all the prophets are equal and they're not to be distinguished or shown distinction between one another, how does Jesus escape death? How does he escape being slain? Something just doesn't fit here. There's no consistent consistency here with the message that we find in the Quran. And, and chapter four or surah four, verse 157 is one of the most, one of the most vague passages in the Quran. It's only made up of 40 Arabic words. And when the Quran says that those who have a doubt concerning the death of Jesus and that they have no knowledge of it, only a conjecture, Christians are not the ones who are conjecturing here. The, the Christians are not the ones who are in doubt here. The ones in doubt are Muslims who are, some of them are going as far as to say Jesus was crucified, but he didn't die on the cross. And so they're willing to say he was crucified, even though the Quran says here that they crucified him not. Wama salabahu. So here we have a serious problem. There is a distinction made among the prophets. Jesus escapes death. Unlike the other prophets, he is not slain. And so when we come back to that first passage we looked at in Surah 384, we do have a serious problem. We do see distinction made among the prophets, even though Allah presumably says you're not supposed to make distinctions. So I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it's uh, it's um, been fruitful in, in, in challenging you. And to our Muslim friends, we just want to remind you once again that we do this out of love for you. We have no hatred. We harbor no hatred towards you, but we love you for the sake of Christ. And it's important for us to critically examine these texts and to ask the question, why were other prophets of Allah slain? And yet Jesus gets away with it scot-free. Isn't that making distinction among the prophets? Think about it. So thank everyone for joining us. We uh, thank you for uh, your attention, listening to this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. There will be many more videos like this coming down in the following weeks and months. Thanks for joining us and God bless you. Bye for now.